Mark 9, 2 to 7. Umakyat si Jesus sa isang mataas na bundok. Wala siyang isinama roon maliban sina Peter, James, and John. Habang sila'y naroon, nakita ng tatlo na nagbago ang anyo ni Jesus. Nagningning sa kaputian ang kanyang kasuotan. Walang sino man sa mundo ang makapagpapaputi ng gayon. At nakita rin nila roon si Elijah at si Moses na nakikipag-usap kay Jesus. Sinabi ni Pedro kay Jesus, Guru, mabuti po na nandito kami. Magtatayo po kami ng tatlong tolda. Isa para sa inyo, isa kay Moses, at isa kay Elijah. Dahil sa kanilang matinding takot, hindi niya alam kung ano ang sasabihin niya. Nililiman sila ng makapal na ulap at mula rito ay may isang tinig na nagsabi, Ito ang pinakamamahal kong anak. Pakinggan ninyo siya. Listen to him. Heavenly Father, we ask you to glorify yourself, to lift yourself up in our midst, to teach us, enlighten us. We seek you, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior and friend. Listen to him. Mark 9, 2 to 3. Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they could all be alone. There, he was transfigured before them. Luke 9, 28 to 29. Another angle to the story from another writer. The appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. And Matthew 17 to adds another angle. His face shone like the sun. So the three Gospels feature this same episode. In this story, Jesus revealed his divinity to Peter, James, and John, who could very well represent the age of the new covenant, the age of love and grace, the age of Christ-likeness, or we call Jesusness. Naiba na ang panahon, dumating na si Jesus na anak ng Diyos, at meron siyang mga tutuparin na mga alituntunin ng kautusan, at matapos niya itong tuparin, ay papalitan niya ng bagong covenant, a new covenant based on love and grace. And these three, Peter, James, and John, could very well represent the new generation of believers that are now being ushered into a new era of love and grace. Hebrews 8, 6-7, defines that mission of Jesus. But now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood. For he is the one who mediates for us a better covenant with God based on better promises. If the covenant had been faultless, the first covenant that is, there would have been no need for a second covenant to replace it. Jesus here is very clearly presented as high priest whose work is far superior to all the work of all the other high priests that preceded him. He mediates a far better covenant which was far better and superior to the other covenant that he is now replacing, the old covenant. The high priest Jesus' work was to replace the first covenant with the second one. Hindi dumating si Jesus to keep things on an even kill. Hindi siya dumating para ituloy lang ng walang incident ang lahat ng mga dati ng nakaugalian. Mayroong malaking pagkambyo, pagbago ng antas at direksyon ng pakikipagmabutihan ang tao sa Diyos at ito na dating pinagigit na ng law ay pagigit na ngayon ng love and grace matapos to pa rin ni Jesus ang lahat ng requirements of the law. It was a period of change, dramatic change in the spiritual understanding of the people and the dynamics between men and God. First of all, Jesus fulfilled the old covenant based on the law and then replaced it with a new covenant based on grace. Nung sinabi ni Jesus na, I did not come to abolish the law, I came to fulfill it. He did. 
He satisfied all the legal requirements of the law for sacrifice at yung sarili niya ang kanyang ibinayad as required by the law. Pero matapos yun, hindi na niya patuloy na pinairal ang law but replaced it with the period of love and grace. This time, people can go to God not by having to obey the law which was impossible to do. That's why Jesus did it for us. But by being in the shadow of God's love kindness and grace as revealed in Jesus. Isang malaking pagbabago from the Old Testament to the New, from the Old Covenant to the New. Jesus changed the old way of legalism into the new way of love and freedom of the Spirit. At mapupunan nyo kung kayo'y laging nakasubaybay sa ating mga pangangaral na purgang-purga na tayo lahat sa teaching na ito ng love and law. Pero kailangan gawin para mag, maging matibay ang pag-unawa natin sa bagong pamamaraan na dinala ni Jesus. And this is the way of love. Bakit kailangan patibayin ang pagkakaunawa dito? Dahil dalawang libong taon na naman eh, na ang church ay lagi may sinasabing love, grace, but in actual practice, on the ground, in the real lives of the people, it was mostly still the law that governed the spiritual lives of the people. Kaya napakalaking kalitohan, law ba o grace, love ba o judgment, kaya dapat linawin. At sa tingin ko, mga kapatid, ay malinaw na ito. Kaya from here on, ay tayo talagang mag-forward na sa paglikha, sa pagbuo ng isang loving church na yung love of Jesus is not only by mouth, by word, by verbalization, but in practice. At yan ang ating mission that we have set before us to make the church really obedient to the teaching of Jesus and to be loving. Hindi yun madaling gawin sa isang church na dalawang libong taon ang nakababad sa pinaghalong love and law, sa pinaghalong grace and judgment na nakakalito sa marami. Sa katunayan, sa pag-implement ng law, nagiging very unloving ang marami. Kaya ang mga tao na pumupunta sa church, sumasali sa spiritual community, hindi naman nangyayari yung pangako na magkaroon sila ng kapahingahan, ng pagmamahalan, katahimikan, dahil nangingibabaw madalas yung law. Which, in practice and in principle, ay talaga magiging unloving pag in-implement mo to the letter. Kaya mahalaga na maunawa ang ministry ni Jesus. At sa palagay ko naman ay sapat na ang mga naging pag-aaral natin dyan sa maraming mga panahon na dumaan. And this loving ministry of Jesus and His message is the reason why the agents of the law opposed and hated Him. And the same agents of the law will oppose and hate people who will insist on the love of God, the love of Jesus, above the legal requirements of the law. 2 Corinthians 3.6 He has enabled us to be ministers of His new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the Spirit. A big shift from the written, limiting, and limited law to the freedom in spirit. Naganap yan, naging namulaklak ang kaganapan yan sa tinatawag nating Day of Pentecost sa Acts chapter 2. When the Spirit of God descended on both men and women, young and old, and they prophesied as the Spirit led them, obviously outside of the written law, outside of the written traditions, kasi bago yung mga revelation na binigay. It was the age of going out of the box. To have a life that was more fulfilling, more restful, and more faithful to that which the Father wants for people. The old written covenant ends in death, sabi ng 2 Corinthians 3.6. But under the new covenant, the Spirit gives life. So instead of a message of death and punishment, it now becomes a message of life, of hope, of eternity. Dahil dyan, the Jesus Church is to be the kingdom of heaven on earth, a haven of grace and love of rest and peace, of freedom and growth in the Spirit 
into Jesus' likeness. We always like to emphasize that this is not going to be licentiousness. Hindi kahit ano na lang pwede, kahit magkalat at magwala ang mga tao, which many people think is what the grace and spirit means. It only means that we love, accept people as they are, where they are, and then we begin a loving relationship that would edify, improve, and make everyone grow towards Jesus' likeness or Christ likeness. You accept people as they are, but you don't stop there. We begin to work together in love so that we could be more and more like God. Meanwhile, may present pa doon sa nangyari si Elijah at Moses. Elijah and Moses, who could very well represent the law and the prophets, siyempre, Elijah and Moses, prophets and law yan. Elijah and Moses, who could very well represent the passing age of the Old Covenant, were also called to the scene. Nandun din sila. Bakit? To hear the forthcoming declaration of the Father, the Most High, and very importantly, to be seen by Peter, James, and John as also hearing the Father's declaration. Up until then, the foremost authority to be heard in matters of life and spirituality, religiosity, legality, was Moses and Elijah or the law and the prophets. Then, God, our Father in heaven, places Moses and Elijah in the scene, in the tableau, to be also seen by Peter, James, and John as hearing the same message. In other words, hindi sila ngayon makikinig kay Moses at Elijah, kundi si Elijah at Moses ipapakita ng amang nakikinig din sa sasabihin niya tungkol kay Jesus. Elijah and Moses were also called to the sin for the law and the prophets to be eventually understood and applied by the disciples from the context of this game-changing revelation. This is really game-changing. Maiiba ang lahat ng pananaw dahil sa ipinaalam at isiniwala sa nangyaring ito. So, in other words, Peter, James, and John, Elijah and Moses, pare-pareho silang lahat na sasabihan ng Ama ng mensahe. Mark 9, 5-6 Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Buti na lang nandito kami. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Litong-lito sila sa takot eh. He did not know, sabi ng scripture, what to say. For they were so frightened. So, dahil sa hindi nila malaman kung anong sasabihin, in confusion, Peter mistakenly placed Moses and Elijah on equal footing with Jesus. Gagawa namin kayo ng kubol, ng marker, kayong tatlo. Napagpantay-pantay ni Pedro yung tatlo. Eh napakalinaw, the visual cue on Jesus' unique glory was very clear. Why? Only Jesus was clothed with heavenly light. And only Jesus' face shone like the sun. The body language is clear. The visual is clear. Iba si Jesus. Angat siya. Kesa kay Moses, kay Elijah, at lalo naman doon sa tatlo. Hindi pantay-pantay. Nagkamali si Pedro ang isipin pantay-pantay dahil bunga siya ng tradisyon na ubod ng taas ng pagtingin sa Law and the Prophets kay Moses and Elijah na pagkamala niyang ka-level lang ni Jesus. But Jesus was obviously in a class by Himself above the other two and above the other three, all five of them. Mark 9, 7, Then a cloud appeared. And Matthew 17, 5 adds a detail, a bright cloud appeared and covered them and a voice came from the cloud. The voice of the Father was speaking from the bright cloud that enveloped them. This, sabi ng boses, referring to Jesus, not to Moses, not to Elijah, this Jesus is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Luke 9, 34-36 says, 
and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. Nilinaw ng boses. Itong si Jesus, ito ang aking anak, ito ang mahal ko, ito ang pinili ko. Makinig kayo sa kanya. O kaya, sa kanya kayo makinig. Of course, the indirect reference was to Moses and Elijah. Sa kanya kayo makinig above Moses and Elijah. Siya lang yung nag-ilaw, siya lang yung nagliwanag, at siya ang tinukoy kong anak ko na kinalulugdan ko, minamahal ko, at pinili ko. Pati yung sequence ng nakita natin sa eksena, very scientific. Di ba na uuna muna kidlat? Tapos madidinig mo yung kulog a few seconds later? Kasi mas mabilis mag-travel ang light waves kesa sound waves. So dito rin, light waves travel faster than the sound waves. Nauna ang kidlat or yung visual, nakita nila yung liwanag, then follow the kulog or the voice, the sound. It's an interesting aside but interesting nonetheless. The voice of the Father, the Most High, revealed Jesus' identity to Peter, James, and John and established to Elijah and Moses, Jesus' identity and ministry. The voice of the Father established Jesus-ness above Moses-ness and prophet-ness, if there is such a noun which we invent. Matthew 5.17, sabi ni Jesus mismo, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. Kaya nilagay sila sa eksena. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. In other words, hindi naman natin nadiligang na magitan usapan kay Jesus at sa kay Moses and Elijah. We could surmise that Jesus said, okay, I'm going to accomplish all the requirements of the law and the prophets. But after that, a new era begins, the age of love, the age of grace, the new covenant in my blood, the new wine in the new wine skin. Mababago ang lahat, pero I will satisfy first the requirement of the law and the prophets. But the satisfaction of that is not in the literal and technical and legalistic sense. Vicariously, Jesus satisfied for all of us the requirements of the law to judge all of us. And once that was established, a new era of love and grace began. Romans 13, 8 to 10. Bakit tinawag natin new era of love? Kasi law ang umiiral, tama? Law ang kailangan para ka makarating sa Diyos, masunod mo yun. Sabi ni Jesus, if you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of the law. For the commandments are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. How else can we be more clear? Sabi ni Jesus, yes, you are required to obey the law. But when you love, it's better than obeying the requirement of the law in a legal, technical term. Your love is better than obedience to the law. In fact, in a higher plane of reasoning, love is the fulfillment of the law because the real purpose of the law is to love. But the implementation of the law can be very unloving. So let us just be very clear. When you love, you don't have to implement the legal requirements of the letter of the law because by loving, you already accomplish the purpose of the law, the spirit of the law. Jesus interprets and reinterprets the law and the way to fulfill the law is now to love. Hindi na yung para masacrifice ka, majudge ka, sundin mo ang lahat ng mga requirements dahil lahat ng yun, sinunod na ni Jesus para sa atin at pagkatapos, naging love na Ang kahulugan. By loving people instead of judging them, by teaching love as their way to God, 
By replacing the harshness of the law with the gentleness of love, Jesus accomplished the purpose of the law, which is love for others. Kung tutuusin sa napakataas na level ng pag-iisip, ang talagang dahilan para sa batas na yan ay para maging loving. Tulad ng you should not steal, that is to love your neighbor eh. You should not cheat, don't covet, do not commit adultery, which means inaago mo yung asawa ng may asawa. Honor your father and mother, lahat yan ay love. Kaya pag nag-love ka, lahat ng yan nasunod na. Matthew 22, 37-40, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Ito pa, the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Hindi madaling i-connect the dots. Hindi madaling i-connect sa utak natin kung paano naging ang pagmamahal sa kapwa ay naging pagsunod sa lahat ng law. Yung mga privilege to understand it in that level, thank God. Pero yung mga nagkakaroon pa ng struggle to connect and paano maintindihan yan, tanggapin nyo na lang. Kasi yun ang sabi. At ipanalangin na maunawa natin minsan na, ay oo nga, nakonek ko na, salamat. Kasi yun ang sinasabi. Love because the basis, the purpose, the end, the method, the beginning, and the end of all the law. Paikot lang yan eh. The beginning is the end. The law should end in love. Ang problema yung method. Kumisan, the human method and all the additions of religions to the method had made the law very unloving in its implementation. Kaya, senior cut na ni Jesus para dumali. Grace, love, Jesusness accomplish what legalistic Mosesness and prophetness could not. That is to save people from judgment and death by the law. Talagang umay na umay na siguro ang marami sa atin sa paulit-ulit na topic na ito. Yung iba, nagdadala na ng atsara, pampaalis ng sawa pag mag-worship tayo. Pero palagay ikaw gagraduate na tayo sa mahaba at paulit-ulit na discussion na to, Kasi naniniwala akong established na. We will move forward to the application of it to the making of a loving church. Doon na tayo. Yung mga teorya na yan, palagay ikaw maliwanag na maliwanag na. Pero ngayong araw na to, may konting buntot pa yung teorya na yan. How to be saved from judgment by the law? Obey all the law all the time, which is impossible. Or love others as you love yourself, which is doable. Salamat kay Jesus. At dinala niya sa atin ang ubod ng linaw, yung mensahe na yun. Itong kwento nga ating pinag-aaralan, napakaraming beses na rin naman natin binalikan. In this dramatic episode, the voice of the Father, the Most High, stressed His love for Jesus. Not that he did not love Moses or Elijah. Sinabi lang niyang ito, si Jesus, ito ang aking anak. Ito ang talagang itinatangi at mahal ko sa kanya kayo makinig. The voice of the Father, the Most High, commanded everyone present to listen to and to obey Jesus and to be under Jesus' authority. Ba't ganun kalinaw yung kwento, pati yung visuals, pati yung boses? Kasi maraming nalilito eh kung kanino talaga susunod. Dapat wala ng kalituhan. Lalo ko ikaw ay Jesus believer and Jesus follower. Ephesians 1, 21-22 Now, He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church. Or parenthesis, mine, for the church to be loved and loving. Because without the love of Jesus, it's almost impossible for the church to be loving when it is obsessed with implementing all the laws. The Jesus church must listen to and obey Jesus above all other teachers. That's the main message of that story. And to make the teachings and examples of Jesus the standard, reference, and basis by which all spiritual and religious teachings are to be measured, filtered, interpreted, and applied. Mark 9, 7 
sa pagbawakas ng kwento. Sabi ng tinig, This is my son, the one I love. One, ha? not the two, not the three. The one I love. Obey him. In other words, parang ganito na rin ang sinabi ng ama. Peter, James, John, and Moses, and Elijah, lahat kayo. This is my son Jesus, the one I love. All of you, hear him. Law and prophets, new and old, all of you, listen to Jesus. Listen to him above all else. Obey him above everyone else. Wala dapat kalituhan in this department. Precisely what Jesus Church, or what the Jesus Church is to practice and model, is to teach and promote the Jesus kind of love. Sadly, this is not always the truth on the ground. May confusion kung alin ang mangingibabaw, alin ang ituturo, alin ang talagang magahari. Now, why Jesus or why Jesusness above all? Jesus comes straight from heaven, from the Father. John 3.13 No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. Parenthesis, mine. Not via any detour or other route. Not from any other origin. Straight from heaven, si Jesus. Hindi dumaan, nakiraan, kung kani-kanino at kung saan-saan. Straight from the Father. John 6.38 For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me. Wala dapat confusion kung sino ang nagpadala sa Kanya. Therefore, yung authority na Kanyang salita ay hindi kailan man dapat matakpan ng salita ni naman. John 17.8 Jesus said to the Father, for I have passed on to them, my disciples, the message you gave me. They accepted it, and they know that I came from you, and they believe you sent me. This is very important for you not only to believe in what Jesus said, but to believe in the one who sent him, the Father, the Most High God. That put together, believing in Jesus and in believing in the one who sent him, should leave no room for doubt as to the Lordship of Jesus, as to the authority of His teaching over any other teaching that came before, during, and after His time, even teachings that came to the church in the last 2,000 years. The teaching of Jesus must be above all. Knowing all that will define faithfulness to His message. Is the church really that faithful to the message of Jesus. O nahahaluan ba yung message yan, ang message ng kung kani-kanino that we are eating a salad? Nakakalito. Pag MWF, grace. Pag TTHS, low. Pag Sunday, kung ano, ang tumama. Kailangan consistent. Jesus is the bread from heaven. Isa na namang talinghaga na dapat pag-aralan ng malalim na malalim outside of the usual pag-aaral and outside of the usual pagkakaintindi na nauna na sa utak natin. Dapat laging nire-review natin yung pagkakaintindi natin. Tama ba o may mas tama o may mas pataas pang uri ng pag-unawa dito? John 6, 32 and 51 Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. Imagine what kind of deconstruction this is. And sabi niya, it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Ang iniisip na ng lahat, si Moses ang nagbigay ng bread. Sabi ni Jesus, no, it was my Father who gave it. So it was a deconstruction and then a reconstruction. Dahil sabi niya, I am the true bread from heaven. Ako ang tunay na dapat yung kainin dahil pag kinain niyo ako, magkakaroon kayo ng buhay na walang hanggan. Of course, this is not literal cannibalism. Ano ba si Jesus? Bukod sa kanyang lupang katawan, si Jesus is the word before the lupang katawan, the abstract teaching, the spiritual teaching of who that katawan became. So to eat Jesus is to understand His teaching, to apply it in your life, to live by it. Then you are eating Jesus, and when you are eating Jesus, you have eternal life. 
Because when you internalize the teaching of Jesus, when the Spirit of Jesus lives in you, then you are connected to Jesus to eternal life, to the Father. Maganda rin pag-aralan yan by diagramming. There's another way to understand all of these complex ideas. So John 6, 48 to 50, sabi ni Jesus, Yes, I am the bread of life. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. Profound. Assignment. Pag-aralan nyo pa yan. Huwag kayong makontento sa dati nyo nang nalaman nung tungkol dyan. Marami pang kahulugan yan. Parang kakanin na sa pin-sapin. Maraming layers. Hindi lang simple. Anyone who feeds on Jesus' essence and teaching, on Jesusness, will be eternal. Now, this declaration of Jesus is worthy of high and transcendent understanding. That's why we should never stop learning. Huwag kayong makukontento sa spoon feeding because the limitation of the teacher will become your limitation. Dapat may self-study. Aral ng aral. Jesus is the invisible divinity made visible. The Word made flesh na tinutukoy sa John 1, 1 and 14. Jesus is the Word made food for the Spirit. John 1.18 No one has ever seen God but the unique one, Jesus. Imagine, brothers and sisters, what this means that no one has ever seen God except Jesus. In other words, no one before Jesus can really truly, faithfully, completely reveal who God is. Because it's only Jesus who has seen God. Jesus, who is himself God, is near the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Maraming revelation na inaakala ang mga tao tungkol sa Diyos. May mga revelation na nakuha sa tula, nakuha sa kanta, nakuha sa literature, nakuha sa tradisyon, nakuha sa ritual. Pero sabi, it is Jesus himself who has seen God at siya lang, therefore, siya lang ang nakakapag-reveal talaga sa malalim, mataas, malawak, at makahulugang pagpapakilala. He, not anyone else, has revealed God to us. Siya lang talaga. Ganun ka-crucial si Jesus sa food chain ng ating spirituality. Siya talaga ang way to God and way of God to us. Except for Jesus, no one has ever seen God. No one can ever make God seen or visible or audible or understandable. Kaya isuko kay Jesus ang lahat ng ating pagkakaunawa tungkol sa Ama. I-validate ni Jesus. Hanapan natin ng confirmation, ng validation, ng definition ang Ama through the revelation of Jesus. Because nobody could make God seen and known as clearly, as faithfully, and as truthfully of Jesus. Kaya tayo dikdik ng dikdik na word na Jesusness. Ibig sabihin lang noon, Christ-likeness, pagiging tulad ni Jesus. Wala na yung iba pang kahulugan na mahiwaga. The invisible God, the Father, is made visible and seen through Jesus, which really is seen through love. Tell me, makikita nyo ba ngayon si Jesus physically? Yes and no? No, kung talagang physically, kasi wala naman siya dito physically. Spiritually, yes. Pero yes, you can see Jesus now when you see love in action. When we see the Jesus followers taking care of the sick, feeding the hungry, accepting the rejects of society, when we see the Jesus people extending the love of God to even the unlovable, then we see Jesus because Jesus is love. And when you see love, you see Jesus. Kaya yun ang dapat makita sa atin. Yun dapat ating statement of faith, hindi lang nakalagay sa kwadro, babasahin mo. No, nakikita ba yung love? Because when people see the love in action, that is our statement of faith. More profound 
than any other statement. John 14, 7, If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Can you imagine? Seeing the Father. Nobody has seen the Father except the Son. Pero sabi ni Jesus, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Now, when you see love, you see Jesus, therefore you see the Father. The Father becomes tangible, becomes visible and audible through love. Ganon kahalaga yun. Nakakapagtaka naman, bakit may nililibak-libak yung word na love, pinagtatawanan, minamaliit. Parang cartoon yung love. Eh, God is love. We must be more serious about the business of love in action. Because only through love in action can the Son and the Father be seen visibly by the world. So know and see the Father through Jesus or through the love of Jesus. There is no other and there is no better way. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Or if we can extend that, no one can come to the Father except through the way of grace and the way of love. Jesus brings the truth and love of the Father to us. John 1, 17, For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. Dinilineate yung role ni Moses at saka ni Jesus. Yung law dumaan yan kay Moses, pero ang love at grace dumaan yan kay Jesus. Huwag mo silang paghaluin kasi magkaiba yun. Ang mapapala kay Moses ay law. At tinupad na yun ni Jesus, fulfilled. Ang matatanggap mula kay Jesus ay God's love. The Father sent Jesus to present and to represent Him. John 5.36 Sabi ni Jesus, I have greater witness than John. My teachings and my miracles. The Father gave me these works to accomplish and they prove that He sent me. You know, people are always looking for proof. What is your authority to do this? What is your proof? Nagaling ka sa Ama. Siyempre, ang existing body of proof na alam nila noon ay yung sinasabi ng tradition nila, sinasabi ng literature nila, sinasabi ng mga kaugalian nila at ritual, yun ang proof. Pagka na-satisfy mo yung sinasabi ng tradition nila, therefore, na-prove na tama ka. Pero sabi ni Jesus, no, 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 hindi yan ang proof ko. Ang proof ko, yung teaching ko mismo. At kakambal noon, mga miracle, na wala sa inyo makakagawa ni Isa, so my teachings, kakambal ang aking miracle, must be the proof that I came from the Father. It is Jesus' teachings and works and miracles that validate Him, not some tradition, not some other reference. Which is what is the people is always looking for. Anong proof mo? Patingin, anong proof mo? Sabi ni Jesus, yung teaching ko mismo, at yung himala ng mga kasama noon na walang makakagawa kundi ako dahil ang amang nagpapagawa, yun ang proof. Yung palang, doon na kayo maniwala. John 14, 11, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Sabi niya, sapat na para panghawakan na maniwala sa akin ang aking mga ginagawa. Mark 1.27 Kaya naman, the people were so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey Him. So new teaching, hindi na rin tatanggapin kasi ang gusto nila yung old. Sa kanila ang tama lang yung old. Yung pinapatunayan ng old. Pero sabi niya, pero may authority eh. Nagpapalaya sa mga demonyo. Sino makakagawa niyan? Yung mga authority nga natin sa religion, yung memoriado lahat ng ating mga teaching, hindi naman nakakapagpalayas. E ito nakakapagpalayas, so dapat yung new teaching niya, kahit walang basihan sa old, eh dapat dati tanggapin. Dahil ang proof, eh yung kanyang kapangyarihan. It is a new teaching backed up with authority coming from the Father Himself. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know His commands lead to eternal life. 
The commands of the Father given to Jesus lead to eternal life. And that command is love. If you can already connect in your heart and mind the relationship between love and eternal life, then you are blessed. Because it is very profound. It is very, very abstract. Sabi ni Jesus, love leads to eternal life. How very highly profound. The vibration and frequency of love melds with the vibration and frequency of eternity, of God who is eternal. When you love, you vibrate with God. You are in the frequency of the eternal, therefore you have eternal life. Kaya sabi ng John 5.24, when you accept Jesus, when you believe in Him, you pass from death to life. Because it is now the frequency of love that is in your spirit. And therefore, it is in connection with the frequency of the love of God who is eternal. Therefore, you have eternal life. Matthew 19, 16 to 19. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, pay attention to this, this is a very important story. Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life. Anong pwede kong gawin para ako magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan? A very important question. If you want to enter life, sabi ni Jesus, keep the commandments. Commandments pala? Hindi balik din sa commandments. Pero matalino tong tao nagtanong. Kasi di ba, tambak-tambak ang commandments nila. Ang dami, 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 dami. Na imposibleng masunod. Okay, eh, kung yun ang paraan para ka maligtas, eh, hindi ka na naman maliligtas. Ang dami kasi, you will always break. Sabi niya, which ones? Alin po sa tambak-tambak na commandments? Jesus replied, simple lang yan, eto yun. Magbilang kayo, church, ha? You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Not steal. Not give false testimony. You shall honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Which ones? The ones on loving others. When you love, it's as good as obeying all the commandments that really matter. Eh, paano po yung bawal kumain ng hipon? Hindi kasali yun. Dietary law lang yun. Hindi yun moral. Paano po yung, di ba, yung nabebre ko yung Sabbath? Eh, again, religious ano yan. Pero walang kinalaman niya sa loving others. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, if you are going to love others, then you can do work on the Sabbath. In fact, kung magliligtas ka ng hayop na nalulunod, it's good. You can do work on the Sabbath. Sabi niya, Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, kung nakakabuti na may gawin ka, loving yun, therefore, it gives you eternal life. Dapat maruro ka magsala. Kung alin doon sa mga laws na yan ang may kinalaman sa love at may kinalaman sa eternity. Yung iba naman, situation na lang. Bagay sa kanila ng unang panahon kasi they were ruled by tribal law. Tribal lang society nila, tribal yung way, so kailangan, sundin nila yon Pero naiba na, naging sophisticated nation na sila. Kaya maging Israel, marami ng old laws na hindi sinusunod ng panahon ni Jesus eh. Kasi, yung kahulugan yan, kahit di ba, mga batas sa mga bansa, may mga constitutional convention, ina-update nila, may mga revisi- revision of constitution. Kasi ano na ba talaga ang mabuti at loving for the entire nation? In update. But the moral laws that do not change are those that are about love. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, well, these things don't change. Love others. It's always effective and that's always the law. Pero yung mga dekorasyon ng mga laws, mga kinalaman sa mga itsura mo, buhok mo, damit mo, yan ay hindi universal moral law. Hindi kailangan magpakamatay ka kasusunod. Kasi loving ba? Kasi kung misan, ang implementation, nagiging unloving, di better not to implement. Kasi ang universal law is love. Yun ang sukatan. Romans 13, 8-10 If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. John 17, 18 Just as you sent me into the world, parenthesis mine with the message of love, I am sending them, my disciples, into the world with the same message of and command to love. Kaya ang tunay na great commission ni Jesus, 
Matthew 28, 18 to 20, sabi niya, Go, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And what is that command? John 13, 34 to 35, A new command I give you. New, ha? Hindi na old command sa pinag-uusapan. Sabi ni Jesus, bago na ang panahon. Tinupad ko na yung requirement ng old command. Now I'm giving to you just one new command. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, meaning by love, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the true Jesus distinctive. Dito nakikilala ang tunay na mana ng palataya, hindi kung anong suit niya, anong fashion niya, anong paraan ng kanyang pagkain. Hindi, kung loving ka, yun, doon ka makikilala. Christ is the invisible image of the invisible God. Colossians 1, 15. We never see the Father, but we see the Father through Jesus. And the Father is who, what Jesus presents. Because He is the image of the invisible God. Hebrews 1, 3, The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. We don't see God, but you want to know God's character? You want to know God by character? Know the character of Jesus. Because Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. Jesus' believers must personify the very character of Jesus, the Father, not the character of the Pharisees, which sadly is what many people see around. Ang nakikita mong character ng maraming religyoso, hindi yung character ni Jesus, which should be the character of the Father, but the character of the Pharisees. Walang katapusang awayan, walang katapusang batuhan, walang katapusang judgmentalism, self-righteousness, self-promotion, holier than others. That's not the character of Jesus. At hindi yan ang dapat nakikita sa buhay ng mga mananampalataya, kundi ang pag-ibig ni Jesus, na siyang tunay na larawan ng Ama. 2 Corinthians 4.4 Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe, parenthesis mine, those who don't believe in love and grace. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. Hindi nila makita yung good news. Ang laging laman ng utak nila yung bad news. Hindi nila makita yung love. Ang laging nilang nakikita judgment. Hindi nila makita yung grace. Ang laging nilang nakikita law. Sabi niya, Satan, the God of this world blinds the minds of unbelievers that they don't see the glory of the good news, the gospel of Jesus. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Maraming mga ganyang nanay eh, yung mga bata, halimbawa, ayaw pang matulog, magagalit si Jesus. Is this the image of Jesus you want your children to know? Yun nga lang, may bata na naglalaro, makikita ako, ayan na si pastor. Ha? Talagang impacto ang image ng pastor, titigil ang bata. Panakot. Ginagawa kasi panakot yung Diyos, yung pastor, yung church. Ito yun ang image eh. The image of God is love. Hindi lagi magagalit si Jesus, bababa ang grade mo. Talaga po, galit siya sa mga bubing. Hindi ba, Jesus loves all. Kahit ano yung grade. Pero siyempre hindi may ibig dahil Jesus loves you kahit ano yung grade mo, sige, magpakabagsak-bagsak ka na. No. As I have said, we begin by accepting people where they are, but we work together so people will keep on improving towards Jesus' likeness. Hindi yung, di ba, kailangan ganun. You begin where the people are. You don't have a very, very high level for them to begin with. Hindi nila maabot-abot, hindi tuloy sila makapag-umpisa. Pero hindi mo naman totolerate na lagi nilang nandun kasi we grow from glory to glory. And that is what Jesus' likeness is all about. So know the Father through and by the representation of Jesus. Make the invisible Father known by and through the visible image of Jesus. And that visible image is love. Huwag natin laitin o mukhang parang yung naglalove yung mga bangag, mga lasing, ang love men, peace man. Hindi ganun eh. Napaka-serious ng business of love. Napaka-sacred. Napakaganda. Huwag nating hamak-hamakin yung word na love. Luke 10.22 No one knows who the Son is 
except the Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Ang anak lang daw ang nakakakilala sa Ama at ang makakakilala sa Ama ay yun lang pagbibigyan ng anak na makilala rin ang Ama. Let's pray that the Son will keep revealing the Father to us in ever-increasing ways so that we can appreciate more and more the glory and love of the Father except through Jesus, expressed in Jesus. Teach about the Father as Jesus revealed and taught about Him. Huwag natin gawin ang amang panakot kasi God is love. John 1.18 No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father. He has made Him known. No one else is more qualified. John 10.30 I and the Father are one. Actually, siguro mga 5 to 10 very profound verses na ang ating dinaanan eh. Yan mahalaga, balik-balikan nyo. Be one with Jesus and be one with the Most High, the Eternal. How can you be one with the Most High? By being one with Jesus. How can you be one with Jesus? By obeying Him, by loving others. Na methodized na eh. Na manualized na. Pwede nang gawin step by step kung paano gagawin yung very profound idea na yan. John 14.20 You will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Another profound verse. I am in the Father. The Father is in me and you are in me. Therefore, you are also in the Father. You enter the divine circle through Jesus. And by entering through Jesus the way, you enter through the divine circle of the Father, the eternal. And the circle is where the beginning is the end. And where the beginning is the end, there is eternity. Be one with Jesus and inherit eternal life. Matthew 12, 6. I tell you, there is one here, sabi ni Jesus, who is even greater than the temple. Can you imagine the temple, that all-defining edifice that defined everything that was high and true and beautiful about Israel? Sabi ni Jesus, I tell you, there is one here who is even greater than the temple and everything that the temple represents, and that is Jesus. Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, all religious teachings must hear, listen to, and obey Jesus because there is one who is even greater than the temple itself, the Son of God, and we are His living temple. Can you imagine? We are the temple of the Spirit. What happens when you accept Jesus, when you accept the Spirit of Jesus into you, you become the habitation of the divine, you become the temple of God. Matthew 23, 10 to 11, you have only one teacher, the Messiah. All church doctrines, rules, policies, and practices must submit to the Lordship and to the command of Jesus. Romans 10, 3-5 For they don't understand God's way of making people right with Himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. Nawa, hindi tayo to na sinisikap pa rin na mapaayos ang relationship with God by trying to keep the law. Because when you try to keep the law and fail in one, it's as good as failing in all. Kaya love na lang. At hindi ibig sabihin ng love na lang, do it the easy way or do it na parang gano'n lang. No, ibig sabihin, kasi ang choice mo, law or love, di love na lang. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. Na-fulfill na yung law. Therefore, hindi natin kailangan gawin. Ang isunod na natin yung part two, the loving part. As a result, all who believe in Him are made right with God. Made right na already with God. 
Romans stand for Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Siya na yung end. Nag-end na yung law sa kanya. Another era begins, the age of love. The teachings of Jesus must be the standard basis and filter for all religious teachings and practice. Yan ang pinagsisikapan natin mga kapatid. At lalo pa natin ngayong puspusang pagsisikapan. We shift gears so that we can create really a loving church. And for the loving church to really happen, you must filter the law. Dahil maraming implementation of the law can be very unloving. That's why we are teaching about the Jesus filter. Lahat ng teachings before Jesus, during Jesus, and after Jesus, especially in the last 2,000 years of church history, all of that must be filtered to, through, validated by the teachings of Jesus. Yung mga conform with the teachings of Jesus, agree, and in unity with it, tuloy. Pero yung mga kinansel na niya, yung mga sinabi niya, hindi nyo na kailangan gawin yan, at yung mga unloving ang mga method, ilalagay na natin sa file. That's why Jesus happened, to bring in the new wine in a new wine skin. So yung old wine, ilagay na sa old wine skin, at itabi na. Bagamat maraming part ng old wine, eh pwedeng ilipat sa new wine skin tulad ng sinabi niyang love your mother and father, love your neighbor, do not steal. Tuloy yun. The universal moral laws of old ay tuloy. Pero may mga hindi na itinuloy, huwag na tayong magpakamatay kasusunod. Magpakahirap at magpahirap sa kapwa sa pagpipilit na masunod yun. That's why we teach the Jesus filter. Tatanong natin, what would Jesus do? Pasado ba kay Jesus yan? O gusto natin parusahan ng isang kapatid na ito? Gagawin ba yan ni Jesus? Pasado ba yan sa kanya? Yan ang Jesus filter. Only this way could the church be loving. Only this way could a loving church be made. When Jesus interprets and applies the law as love. Yung law na ginawang loving. When Jesus makes love, the law and the command of the church. Kaya lagi natin sinasabi at ito'y talagang puspusan na natin gagawin. Together, let us make a loving church. Doon na. Yun ang gusto natin. Yun na ang kailangan natin. Tama na ang mga batuhan, mga sobrang judgment sa isa't isa, pagtanggi, pag, pagtatanggal, pagsipa, paghiwahiwalay. Let us be loving because that is what Jesus is all about. A church where the law is love. Close your eyes and imagine a church where the law is love. Narested ka. Love accepted. Although project. Inaayos natin ang isa't isa. Pero we begin with love. With acceptance. Matthew 15, 8-9 These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Kaya kailangan ang Jesus filter. And the test is love. Matthew 7, 24, sabi ni Jesus, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows me is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. John 8, 51, Very truly I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Nawa tayo yung tupa ni Jesus na alam natin ang tinig niya kahit maraming ibang nag-aagawa mga tinig at sa tinig niya tayo sumusunod. John 14, 23, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Imagine you becoming the home of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Where the divine is in you. When you can say, Thy kingdom come and the kingdom of God is in you as Jesus wants it. Listen to Jesus. Listen for the voice of Jesus. Hear Jesus and make Jesus heard. Siya dapat ang naririnig mula sa atin para makilala siya ng marami.
Ama namin salamat po. Salamat na pinagkakalooban niyo kami ng pagkakataong makilala si Jesus at kayo sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. Binubuksan po namin ang aming puso, ang aming isip, ang aming buhay para lalo pa kayo maghari at maging totoo ang pag-ibig niyo sa aming buhay at sa aming kapatiran. Salamat Panginoon sa ngalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus.